Hello, and welcome to Let's Program with Santier. I'm Santier, and today I'm going to continue with the Task Tracker program. This is kind of where we left off last time, and I had a couple of thoughts after um, basically my last recording session, uh, which is that name is probably incorrect for this. And the reason for that is very simple. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rename this to General Properties, I guess. Um, now, the reason for this substantial name change is because I realize there's a couple of additional properties that I'm going to have for tasks. Um, so name will be a property. No doubt about that, but there's a number of other ones as well. So let's go ahead and get our, uh, where is our text box? Every now and then I lose things in here for whatever reason. Okay, so this text box is going to actually hold the name. So this, I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to group box name. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to just like prefix those with like uh, group box and these with like field. So what we're going to be doing with these is because um, I'm working on this task edit form, right? So by default, this is going to have a general properties, I don't know, item. I guess is the proper term. So let's just go ahead and put um, general properties in here. So the idea is when you select general properties, this pane over here will be filled with the general properties, which is what I want it to have by default. So um, let's go about kind of putting this together. Um, So the big challenge with this, okay, so there's a couple of things I want to do. Um, Splitter.panel2.resize. And what this is going to do is this is just merely going to go uh, splitter.panel2.controls. Um, so if this has uh, controls, should only ever have one. Um, size equal uh, dot client size. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're just making, if there is a control inside this panel and we resize it, we're going to fit it to the, uh, to the panel. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, might as well comment it though, so I don't have to uh, read the code to understand what's going on here. If there is a control in the second panel, put it to the panel. Okay. So now what I want is um, let's see. Task modules? Is that what I called the thing? Yeah, probably. Um Selected index should be zero, and just in case it isn't already. And then task modules uh, select index changed. Okay, so this is where we're going to get kind of the heart of things. Um, the list of modules. So one of the other things that we're going to need to do is um, insert modules. So zero index is a special case. Uh, it's it's always just going to be a uh, a special case because quite frankly we're going to need that special <gasps> excuse me that special case so if task modules dot selected index is equal to zero this else this okay um. Actually, I'm going to add another quick if the selected index is less than zero, just return. Because we, we don't have any business to do if it's less than zero. Um, er, what? Can't do anything. Get me out here. 
Okay. Um, index zero is the special case of the general properties. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to go blah, 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 splitter, panel two dot controls. Okay, so we're just gonna add this actually, cause we're gonna need to do this every time. Out the current control and replace it with the one for the task module that we are adding. Um, adding is wrong. Selecting. Selecting is correct. Okay. Every other case. Sounds good because that's what's going on there. <sighs> water is delicious. Usually when I make a long pause like that, I'm drinking water. Okay. So in this particular case, what we want to do is um, take our splitter panel two dot controls dot add, and I'm just gonna make a uh, nope, nope, that's wrong. Uh, task module. No, it should be a general. Oh, what's going on with this guy? Uh, it's still called name. Okay. Um, you name this to general properties. Uh, quick actions. Blah blah blah. Okay, so something busted there. Um, we'll just do it the manual way. Uh, open up this, uh, save that file, close it, what is, oh, whatever, some sort of task view, do I need to, okay, apparently not, at least if I do, I'm not going to worry about it, okay, so what I want to do now is a general properties, because that's now what it's properly called, uh, gp equals new general properties, Attach it. Okay. So general properties is actually going to need. Um, this is going to take task. Uh, owning task. Uh, because we're going to need to actually edit stuff in the task itself. So this is just going to be our task. Um, and we'll add gp. Oh, and gp dot. Um, location equal new point uh, zero zero. Just be explicit about that. I believe by default it's going to be zero zero anyway, even if I didn't put zero zero on there, but you know, just being slice, that doesn't sound right. Um, just going to do this. Okay, and then we put it in the thing, which is what we want to do. Now for most of these, what we're going to have is I'm just going to put control uh, C equals null. And then if uh, c does not equal null, um, c dot location equals new point. Same mumbo jumbo is up there. Um, aha! Still on my clipboard, except I brought along an extra equal sign friend, which is not what we want. Um, and then this business, except with c instead of gp. Okay, so what I'm going to do right here is um, if we have a control to add, add it. Um, so this right here is going to have to have something in it. Switch with the information, the uh, module. So what we're probably going to end up needing to do is like uh, default is just going to break. Uh, we don't know what to do with this, so leave C C as a null. We won't add anything. Okay, so it might be a good idea, uh, like if C is null, to actually go ahead and put in an else and make a label. Um, uh four color red where I'm just making it red for like a warning or whatever. Um 
and then uh, l dot text equals error unknown uh, module type, and then uh, letter dot panel two dot controls dot add l. Okay, so this right here. Um, Give an error message if the or if the uh, module type is unknown. Slash, we don't make it. Okay. Um, now this is going to be a little tricky because what I'm going to need to figure out is how I want to set up basically um, accessing what the um what item is at that index but it's actually probably pretty straightforward um so what i'm going to need to do is i'm just going to put uh task module module uh, equals task dot task modules and then this needs to be uh task modules dot selected index minus one minus one because um minus one because the um first index is general properties otherwise we're going to have indexing problems so this is going to be um module dot uh, id so remember this is the type as opposed to other ids which are an indexing thing this is the type. Uh, so what we're going to want here is we're going to want to have something like, you know, case, whatever, make the control into C, and then C will automatically kind of get added with the code down below. So, um, right. So what I want to do now is um, let's go ahead and add general properties is something I'm going to need to fill out, but I'm going to go ahead and add a user control for uh, due date. Um, so this is going to need to take a uh, TM due date. Um, due date. Uh, this is going to need to be rebranded to internal oh, properties. Not yeah, it's needing to be. That needs to be internal as well. Um, task owner uh, okay and then uh, field name dot text equals um, owner dot name cool so that's going to fill that out there's going to be other stuff that I'm going to want to add in there as well something that I'm going to want to add is like just a display for date created and just other random stuff I'm going to want to add a priority field um, so any other things that's like a general property of all tasks is going to go into the general properties tab. Otherwise, it's going to go into something like this. It's going to have its own own uh, thing that's appropriate. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do over here is I'm going to go ahead and make a case for due date. And uh, C is going to equal a new due date. And then this is going to be um, TM due date module, because we identified that that's what type of module this is. And then we can just break. So this is that's going to just do all that we need to do for that. This is going to take care of sizing and adding it to our control and this, of course gets cleared out beforehand. So what we should be able to do is add a, uh, a due date. So there's a couple of important things of course. For example, when we um, load the control, um, we need to Let's see, uh, just task uh, owner. 
um, that task modules. So for each uh, task mod module module and okay, so we're gonna get th go through all of these, and we're gonna go ahead and actually um, let's see this guy dot items dot add module dot uh, to string. Okay, so what what that should do is because these are overriding the uh, the two string, right? So this is just going to give me um, this. So it's not going to necessarily like update it as we change stuff, but what I'll potentially consider doing is. Um, Adding some sort of like refresh functionality, maybe I'm not sure. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Like when you close it and reopen it, it'll have that sort of stuff updated. Um, but for right now, that's kind of what I'm going to do. So, what I want to do uh, now actually is this add button right here it doesn't do anything, so I need to make this add button do something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go task dot um, add module and this is actually um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it this way so I'm gonna go ahead and, and make a task module uh, new module equals task module dot uh, generate and rather than that I'm going to cast the um, Let's see this right here into the type to generate and then if new module does not equal null add new module to it and take our uh, task modules Whoop, items dot add module dot two string okay so there's a couple of things that can potentially be done to kind of spruce some of this up uh, one of the immediate obvious ones is to kind of allow refreshing of the names so that might be something that I put on like a right click menu uh, because obviously these names are going to kind of get out of date as the information gets updated so make a new module and add it to the correct areas. Okay, so what this means pretty soon is that we're gonna be able to test the functionality of making this ding at me. So that'll be fun. Um, I don't need this open right now. So I'm gonna close that. I'm looking forward, there's gonna be a lot of these to add. Uh, and I'm looking forward to adding them because it's gonna be cool to uh, just kind of plow through a bunch of different things that are going to make my life hopefully a lot easier once this program is done. Water time. Ah, delicious. Okay, so um, the thing that's kind of important for this is uh, a date time picker. Okay, so this... Uh, we'll see how this works. I'm not sure if it... Let's see. Let's see actually what properties I have. Checked. Uh, when show select box is true, terms of check. Checked. You selected a value. Interesting. Um, so, because there's, there's a couple of different ways of kind of uh, doing this. Obviously, there's uh, some interesting min maxes on the date. Okay, so it looks like it has support for actual time of day as well. I've not really worked with one of these a whole lot before. Because um, I've just not needed to. Uh, so I was kind of wondering if there was like... Um, time? Custom. 
What does custom do? Like, obviously, this doesn't... Um... Short... Long... Uh... Do I need to, like, stretch that? I'm not... Because I haven't really worked with one of these before, I'm not really sure uh, exactly how I need it to work. So, I'm going to find out. Um, uh, here's where you specify the custom format. So, okay, so this is interesting. Um, what is this thing called? This is a date time picker. So, this is where we bring this up. Date time picker. And this will allow us to be able to look up the documentation on it. It's very useful. Documentation is very handy. Uh, yep, so it does stuff with date time. And what I want to know, uh, date and time to display the date and time with a specified format. It allows the, represents a Windows control that allows the user to select a date and a time and to display the date and time with a specified format. Okay. Uh, so it has a bunch of stuff. I kind of want to see its description down here and look up the custom. Wow, that's long. Um, it only supports Gregorian calendars, which is fine because that's what I use. Um, but if you don't, I'm sorry. It used to represent a date. It appears in two parts, a drop-down list with a date represented in text, and a calendar that appears when you click the down arrow next to the list. The calendar looks like the month calendar control, which can be used for selecting multiple dates. For more information about the month calendar control, see the month calendar, blah, blah, um, blah. Okay. Uh, a bunch of stuff about that. Um, let's see... Um the show up in proper time. Um Um Let's see. Um Interesting. Uh Okay, so interesting. Um, let's see what this says. The one or two digit day, the two digit day, zero, week abbreviation, day of week name. Okay. So I'm going to use this right here to kind of construct myself a um, a string. Um, so what I want is uh, year, 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 um, month, month. Day day. Um, I don't know. Um, let's go hour, hour, minute, minute, and then. Okay. So I want that lowercase h's. Months are capital, minutes are lowercase m's. And then I want tt. Uh, so this should be hh, mm, tt. I think. Okay, so if I change this to custom, Okay, so obviously I've done some things wrong. 
Uh, I need two D's, lowercase, not capital. And the year is lowercase, not capital. This is very, very picky. Okay, so now we can see um, that I'm recording this at 2018 uh, Yeah, you can see the, the date down there. I might prefer that formatting. Which would I prefer? Actually, let's try this. Um, month, month, slash, day, day, slash, year, 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 year. Like that. Just because that's more of a traditional American way of setting it up. You can set it up however you want. Um, yeah, so let's see. Because that's basically the information I need um, on that front. Uh, I'm going to just call this when, because that's what that's supposed to have. So um, when dot uh, date. Data bindings. Um, is there a way to get it that doesn't use data bindings? That's a good question. Obviously, I'm working with stuff that I haven't really had to deal with before, so. Um, let's see. Uh, text is probably not what I want. Value, I bet, yeah, yep, value is what I want. Date dot, uh, what do I call it here? I call it something. Oh, due date dot due date. Smart. Okay. And then when dot value changed, it's classic, uh, Okay, so I'm going to need uh, a TM due date um, owner equals null. So I like to set those to null, but whoops, that is not the right spot to do it. Okay, owner equals due date. Cool, now I should just be able to go um, owner dot due date equals uh, when dot. Um, value. Okay, so this doesn't have everything I'm going to need to have for this particular type of control. But it's a start. Like, all of these are supposed to be a start, and I'll kind of um, get them a little bit more fleshed out as we go along. But because I want something interesting going on, ha ha ha, uh, interesting, visible, I want to test stuff. That's what I mean. Let's see if this gives me an error. My hair is still damp from walking. Uh, I had a nice walk earlier. It was very sunny, relatively speaking. Okay, so I want to edit this task. Right now I have general properties, um, which has the name. So I should be able to rename this thing. Uh, and then, like, if I... I'm just going to add a new category, blank. Okay, so obviously this name field is not not working the other way very well but so this this gives me stuff um what happens if i pick like that okay and then i can be like 50 and it's like three okay that's cool that's cool um so theoretically yeah this still has the state so it would actually be um, I can't test it because I don't have the ability to kind of count dates yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. So that's really cool. So you can see what happens though is like if I add another due date, which I can do, um, I have another due date here and I can just edit the individual properties. And so this will have like, oh, here's these. And like if I resize that, it'll kind of move things around there and that sort of thing. Uh, so I obviously need to hook more stuff up, but you know this this kind of works. This just just allows me to select today. I don't know why it only half shows up blue. But that's very peculiar. But 
So I can pick today and what's well, 41, so I could pick 42 p.m. And then um, theoretically, if once I get everything set up, that should be able to go bing. Uh, but that's going to require me to set up a bunch of stuff to make those things work. So I feel like I've made some good progress, though, with, uh, with things today. So next time, I'm going to basically continue working on this. Uh, working on this stuff here. So getting all of this put together. Until then, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.